طيب let's continue with example 8-7 okay so let's look at the second requirement which is also find the volume of the second reactor if it was CSTR or packed bed reactor so we want the volume now if we want the volume now now we have to go beyond thermodynamics into chemical reaction engineering where we need kinetics in order to design the reactor meaning finding their volume okay so therefore in the additional information we do need the rate constant we need the kinetic data as well as the thermodynamic data okay so if it was CSTR what would be the design equation well simple V2 equals if A0 over minus RA2 multiplied by X2 X2 minus X1 X2 minus X1 here so that will give you the volume of the CSTR okay what if it was a packed bed reactor a packed bed reactor so we can use the a design equation for the packed bed reactor or the if you want the volume then it looks like the plug flow reactor okay so we can write it this way come on v2 equals integration of f a naught over minus r a dx well the limit well the limit is from x1 0.36 all the way to x2 which is 0.54 okay if you're gonna you can use polymath to solve it if you want to use hand calculation so but make sure that you do not take minus ra outside the integration or you don't even take k rate constant outside the integration because k rate constant is variable it changes as you go down the length of the reactor why because the temperature is changing okay so you want to still use hand calculation you can do establish the table where you can calculate if a naught over minus r a versus x okay so i'll leave the calculation for you to do it the answers are given already okay these are the answer if it was CCR it will be 0.0231 cubic meter if it was a packed bed reactor it will be 0.175 cubic meter as you can see the volume of a CSTR is much smaller why because the reactor is operating at higher rate of reaction why because the temperature inside the CSTR is T2 is the same as the temperature at the exit, right? It's 420 Kelvin. However, however, if it was a plug flow reactor or pack bed reactor, the temperature will start at 350 and gradually increases to 420 Kelvin. Come on, so that means the rate of reaction inside the reactor will be small and then keeps increasing as the temperature increases of course you have to look at the effect of the concentration as well because here yes the temperature is increasing which increases the rate of reaction but at the same time the CA is decreasing and cv is increasing which affects the rate of reaction negatively it decreases the rate of reaction okay but overall we know that the rate of reaction there was ccr would be much higher because the ccr is operating at the high temperature okay i know that concentration is lower but the effect of the high temperature on the rate of reaction is more than the effect of the low CA concentration and the high CB concentration okay let's move forward 
Okay, the last set of requirements. Also determine the heat duty. So we need to calculate Q dot. The coolant flow rate and the surface area of the first heat exchanger where it's operating in a counter current flow mode and the value of U is given for a molar feed rate if a naught of 40 mol per second. Assume that water with this given Cp, you know the Cp of water of course, is available for cooling at 25 degrees C but cannot be heated above 45 degree C. Why it cannot be heated over 45 degree C? I, I know that liquid water can be heated up to 100 degree C, but why here the specification? Well, this is something to do with the environmental concerns because if you are taking the water from the sea or from the river at temperatures 25 degree C and then you want to return it back after using it as a coolant where its temperature will increase or take it back to the water surface, to the sea, to the lake, to the river. I don't want to ruin the marine life there, right? I don't want to put hot water, which is 80 degrees C, into the back into the water body, right? Because I don't want to harm the environment. I don't want to affect the fish and the, uh, you know, the plants and the water. Okay, so that's why there is this limitation. Okay, so how do we go about it? So let's do one by one. Let's find Q dot first, and then the M dot, and then the A surface area. Okay, so this was the solution, and let's look at the available equation. So we have different way of writing the equations and in this case which equations do we need well it's up to you still i would say Tema. but let's concentrate a little bit here and let's look at the first cooler and we want the information concerning the first cooler so we said if you want to cool down the stream here stream one from 444 Kelvin down to 350 Kelvin. How much Q you should remove, how much heat you should remove from this stream in order for its temperature to drop. Okay, so we can use any of these equations, of course. Come on, any of these equations, seriously. Let's use this equation. Come on, let's use this equation, okay. So let's look at this equation and remember we're doing balance around the cooler and if you remember I told you energy balance is always much easier than the material balance because energy cannot be created that's one reason the other reason that because for a system you're gonna do one energy balance regardless of how many species you have Unlike the material balance, you can you will need to do energy uh, material balance as much as the number of the species. Okay, type. So we can do balance on the reaction mixture side of the heat exchanger, or we can do energy balance on the coolant side of the heat exchanger. Well, we're gonna start with the reaction mixture because we have all the information there. So let's look at the energy balance for this steady state system. We know that there is no shaft work inside the heat exchanger. Do we have heat? Yeah, of course, that's what we want to calculate. That's the duty, right? That's what the heat exchanger has to do. Its duty is to remove heat or to add heat. Okay, what about delta H? Well, we're looking at the reaction mixture so this delta h is referring to the enthalpy at the exit right which is stream zero two minus the enthalpy total enthalpy at the inlet which is stream one equals q dot okay let's look at 
the sorry let me fix it okay let's look at the enthalpy of the stream leaving out obviously you will say huh it consists of the enthalpy of a at this stream plus the enthalpy of b at this stream because we have only a and b and then the same thing you can say about stream one so it is a one plus h t b one right okay and then you will say wow we can simplify this right we can take the delta h for a and we can take the delta h for b right because we have here b and b and then we have here a and a okay that's we can write actually this from the beginning once you look at delta h you say delta h consists of the change in enthalpy of a and b in these streams okay so let's write delta h for a so we need to multiply the mole flow rate okay so which mole flow rate do we take the mole flow rate at stream one or at stream zero two well it does not matter right because the mole flow rate is the same there's no reaction so let's start with f a one stream one okay multiply by cp a multiply by the t at stream zero two minus t at stream one likewise you can write for delta h for b that is f b at stream one which again same as if b at stream zero two times c p b times t zero two minus t one okay what does that equal well let's see let's see what that equals well basically basically you can take c p as a common factor and also t zero two minus t zero t one right because here the c p a equals cpb so let's do this let's take cp oops maybe i should write in black let's take cp as a common factor and also t02 minus t1 and what is remaining well, what remaining is fa1 plus fb1 what does that equal plus fb1 remember it equals this guy equals f t1 right and you know that f t1 equals f t0 because the stoichiometry is 1 to 1 which equals f a naught because if t naught is simply or stream entering stream consists of a only so it equals f a1 so let's write the above equation as follows then okay so let's write q dot okay I'll write different color q dot equals we say it, it equals cpa right cpa cpa times t02 minus t1 times f a naught okay so this is how you calculate q dot do we have the value of cpa yes we do do we have the temperatures yes we have f a naught is given as well so this is how we calculate q dot let's at least reflect on its sign we know that t02 is 350 and t1 is much larger so this term will be negative is it negative when you are looking from the point of view of the reaction mixture what's happening to the reaction mixture hmm? what's happening to the reaction mixture well it's losing its heat right it's losing heat to the coolant so therefore the sign would be negative and it's correct okay we calculated the duty and this is the value of the duty okay
Okay, I put it positive because that's the value of the duty. I'm not talking about the direction. طيب, what else we need to calculate? Well, we need to calculate the mass flow rate, right? Mass flow rate of the coolant. How do we calculate it? Also using this equation. From the coolant point of view, from the coolant point of view, delta x dot for the coolant equals q dot. What does q dot equal? Well, remember it was negative for the reaction mixture. It must be positive for the coolant. For the coolant, it will be positive. So it will be 188 kilocalorie per second. What about delta H for the coolant? Well, it's very simple. It's M dot, right, times M dot C times CPC times delta TC. What is the delta TC? Well, it's the temperature at the exit. Right, which was 45 degree C minus temperature at the inlet for the coolant, of course. We're talking about the coolant, right? So it's around 20 degrees C, and then we have the so this guy's given, this guy's given, this guy's given. We can calculate m dot C, and uh, which is around 9.4 kg per second. What happens if I fail prov to provide? 9.4 kg per second of coolant of water into the heat exchanger well obviously the temperature here could not go down to this right tamam what if still we were able to reduce the temperature to 350 then the temperature at the exit will be higher than 45 degrees c okay that's the problem therefore we need to flow 9.4 kg per second i could flow more well, at a higher rate if i flow at higher rate then the temperature at the exit will be lower than 45 degree c okay what's the last requirement well the last requirement is to find the area how do you find the area Hmm, that's a very good question. The area is like we are designing the heat exchanger and the area depends on the rate of heat transfer. Just like the volume of a reactor depends on the rate of reaction. They are, in both cases we are designing, which means it depends on the rate. If we design the reactor, we need to know the rate of the reaction if you design the heat exchanger meaning finding its area we need to know the rate of heat transfer so we have to go to the subject of heat transfer what does the subject of heat transfer say about the design and uh, finding the area well we know that equation is q dot coolant equals u times a times delta t log mean can we find the delta t, t log mean Yes, we find Remember, the flow is counter current. Okay, so this is for the coolant thermal and for the reaction mixture. Then, reaction mixture, this is the coolant. We can decide which position is one, which position is two, and then we can actually find the delta T log mean. Right, so delta T log means equal delta t at this position minus delta t at this position divided by len delta t1 divided by delta t2 so we have all the values of the temperature of course here the temperature is 25 degrees c here it is 45 degrees c and here you have it at 44 kelvin and then here you have it at 350 kelvin of course both have to be and Kelvin. Right? You have to convert this to Kelvin or actually you know what you don't need to because you're gonna find delta T anyway. Okay just make sure that um, well actually you do need sorry I, I'll draw that because you're gonna use delta T so you have to find delta T 
Kelvin here and here has to be in Kelvin as well. Okay, so do please convert it into Kelvin. Okay, so let's see. Now this is known. We can calculate this guy. This guy is known. We just calculated it from the previous uh, requirement and U is given. We, we can calculate A and the value of A is 22.5 square meter. Okay, so we found all the requirements for this example. If you are interested, you can go ahead and calculate the duty here, the mass relative of the coolant here, and the area of the heat exchanger here. And you can also calculate V1 here and V3 here as well. Okay, so with this, we finish example H7. Looking forward to see you again in the following lecture. Bye for now.